That is why I say games, you say gathering. Again? Yes! Gathering. Yes! Gathering. Yes! Yeah, yeah, that's how we do it. And still remember this feeling and keep it with you for the rest of the day. And for the start, for the start of our presentation of our Games Gathering Conference, we'll hear a story from Irina Chaban, wonderful lady, clever business lady, and talented artist, the CEO of the Sound Universe, who will tell us how to survive through hard times with your business, with your life, especially when there is war in your country. And she will share some experience with us. That's why I offer you to, in, to welcome her with loud applauses and start our presentation. Thank you, thank you for coming in the early morning. It was um, really responsible for me to start the conference. And uh, it's not really maybe funny topic, but it's our reality and uh, I will show you um, how we live in Ukraine, how we live and how we work in the conditions of the map. Okay, let's start. A couple of words about me. My name is Irina. I'm the CEO and audio director of Universe Music. It's, uh, I operate a small team of sound designers and music composers. And we uh, outsource game audio services to different companies. Uh, more than 10 years in the game industry. And uh, since the war begins in Ukraine, me and all my teams, uh, all, my, all my team stays and continue working in Ukraine. Uh, let me say a couple words about the philosophy. Earlier, I really like uh, to read a lot about another war, the World War II. And uh, there was one book which impressed me the most of the all. It was written by Eva Edith Heger, the choice. Uh, Edith was a 16 years girl when she got to the Auschwitz concentrated camp. Uh, she lost uh, her family there. Uh, she became the patient of um, Dr. Mengele. But uh, Edith survived. And after the war, after when the, uh, she became the famous psychologist. And uh, in this book, Edith. gives her the power to be strong and um, more powerful. And uh, the main idea of this book is no one can avoid suffering in their life, but everyone has a choice how to get out of such situation as a victim or as a survivor. And uh, when the war began in my country, this idea really helped me a lot. Because uh, the beginning of the war, it's a huge shock for everyone, Ukrainian. And I think uh, everyone asks himself, oh my God, why it happens with me? Why, why I need suffering? Why me? Yeah? But uh, uh, all these questions doesn't have another answer, any answers. This is the way. The world is unfair and the reality never goes the way we want. So when I just ask why, it doesn't help. It makes me helpless uh, and uh, makes me victim. But uh, when I decide not to be a victim, I still survive. I still alive, so I can do something. Yeah, and uh, my position changes. Uh, the position of survivors give you a power to do something, to act, uh, and makes us the fighters. And uh, then my question changes, what can I do right now? How can I help myself, my family, my team, and my country? And the uh, decision not to be a victim was maybe the most important decision which I made uh, during the war begins. Uh, as a lot of uh, Ukrainian businesses and companies, we needed to adopt to the new realities. 
and I just uh, tell you uh, which steps we made in order to um, keep running uh, and operating even in this uh, most extreme situation. This is, uh, my speech is not about sound, absolutely. It's uh, about the crisis management in the, <laughs> in the horrible <laughs> war. Okay, which challenge we meet in Ukraine almost every day? One of them is, uh, sorry, missile attacks. Yeah, and uh, as you can see on this map, there are no absolutely safety places in Ukraine. Whenever you can be, uh, you have uh, a risk to be to be shooted. Yeah, and uh, now for now, our top priority is the safetyness. Uh, when we work, the first thing about we, we think about is the safetyness. So when we hear the air raid alerts or siren sounds, we just stop working and uh, go to the safe place or to the bomb shelters. One moment, sorry. So the safety is a top priority for every Ukrainian who stay in Ukraine. And another good option is remote work as a part of Satanist. For example, I have the shelter in my house and I don't have a shelter close to my office. And sure, I prefer working from home and uh, give possibility to go to a safe place. Um, remote work also good well for people and companies who uh, were located in the cities which are close to the front line, like Kharkiv, Kramatorsk, etc because uh, it's too dangerous uh, to stay here, yeah? and the people evacuated to more safe places. They lost uh, access to their offices, they lost access to their equipment, instruments, uh, but uh, they still continue working remotely from another cities, and it's quite well. Another good step is uh, to have mobile setup as a portable working setup. Why? Uh, sometimes a raid alerts uh, takes a really long time, uh, especially in winter when Russia attacks with, you know, creates, make, make massive attacks. Uh, and uh, we could uh, go to the shelters in the early morning and spend almost one day, almost the day till the evening there. And all this time you just uh, sit in, wait and do nothing, uh, scrolling the news, yeah, the news are always horrible and uh, it uh, makes me even more frustrated and stuck in the emotion. So we decided not to lose this time and uh, each my uh, workers, yeah, my, my team has a, a portable working setup, it's laptop, uh, headphones and the hard drive with all necessary soft plugins uh, in order to continue working. It's easy to take it with this and go to the safe place. Uh, sometimes my working place looks like this, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And sure, it's it's a vault uh, under the houses, and uh, here is maybe to say it's to my cats. It's my daughter, <laughs> and it's me working with the customer, <laughs> communicating with the customers. Uh, maybe it's a funny picture, but really, uh, this um, daily routine, working routine, really helpful. You know, because you are not stuck in the emotions. Yeah. I'm still alive. I can do something. I do as I can, which I know. Sure, we, we have some limitations because it's impossible to create music, for example, in the shelter. Yeah. We don't have the instruments. We don't have um, MIDI keyboards or another stuff. But we can still work with the sound design tasks in the shelters. We can still, I can manage voice talents remotely. I can do any communication, writing emails, etc., etc. We just continue working in, even under uh, missile attacks. Um, blackouts. Maybe you hear this word, yeah. Uh, what this blackout is. Uh, in last winter, Russia attacked with missiles a lot of uh, Ukrainian power plants and uh, a lot of them were destroyed. And it caused the huge deficit of electricity in the country. And uh, as you can see, it's a uh, space view to Ukraine for in the night. 
and uh, it looks like the black hole, like black spot. Uh, to compare, this is the city lights of Moscow. You can compare there yeah, how this city looks like and how the, oh, the whole country looks like in the blackout. What is blackout? Uh, just imagine for one moment your city absolutely without electricity. You cannot work, you cannot switch on your computer, you don't have an internet, you cannot use your household devices like washing machines, microwave ovens, uh, refrigerators. You don't have a heat in your house. You don't have a water because water pumps also doesn't work. Um, in high buildings, all elevators stops. All city transports like trams, trolley buses, subway, which need electricity, it's also stop. It, it makes a huge collapse of moving everywhere, anywhere. Uh, you, can use, you cannot use your banking cards. You cannot pay anything without cash because bank, banking system also doesn't work without internet. It causes a collapse. And uh, you even not to call anyone because you have a smart cell phone. It, use, it, it works, but it's useless because it doesn't have a signal. Uh, equipment of mobile operators also require uh, electricity and you cannot call your parents, you cannot call your close ones or friends, you cannot uh, call to first medical aid if you need it. Yeah, it, You became to the total informational vacuum. You don't know the news, you don't know how to <laughs> communicate to anyone, you don't know what happens in, in your city, in your country at this time. In it, in, in total darkness, and it can uh, long uh, up to several days, first first time. But later, our power engineers uh, managed to repair some uh, electrical equipment and uh, partly restore the electricity supply. And uh, they uh, arranged the schedule of uh, supply electricity to each, to each city, to each street, and it looks like this table. Um, this is uh, the time during the day, yeah. and this is uh, Sunday, Monday days, days of the weeks. And uh, now we can know we, at what period of time we have electricity and which period we don't have. And uh, thanks to these schedules, it was possible. It, be it became possible to plan our daily activity, and. Uh, Last winter, all Ukrainians became the experts in time management due to this situation. Yeah. So how we resolve the issue with these breakdowns, which we, when we don't have, sorry, oy, oy, oy. sorry, sorry, when we don't have an electricity, how we work? Uh, we use different electrical storage devices and fuel power generators. I can show some of them to you. It's uh, really different uh, devices. Uh, some of them is like this, it's homemade. It's uh, really, it's a car battery. It's a car battery from the huge truck. It works like the port of electricity. And this is UPS block. We, it uh, transforms the voltage from the battery to the uh, needs uh, for your laptop or computer, yeah? And you can switch on a uh, computer to this <laughs> device and work up to several hours without electricity. Uh, portable power stations, it uh, works the same. It's uh, really, it's a huge power banks which uh, let you to work independently up to 12 hours. And they have uh, the different outputs, uh, sockets for sockets for USB and uh, for different devices. You can charge your phone, you can charge your laptop and uh, continue working. And uh, companies and people who live in the private houses and companies who continue operating their offices use the fuel power generators of different types. It works, it looks like this. It's really noisy, yeah. And uh, when you go anywhere in the streets in Ukraine this winters, it's a constant buzzing bzzz, because absolutely any uh, shop, cafe, any uh, companies uh, use these devices uh, in order to stay operating. And uh, this is just a kind of black humor which we... 
which we have last year, but that's our reality. Because uh, often in Black Fridays, all professionals, sound designers, or another artist, yeah, they just uh, use sales in order to buy new new instruments, plugins, and something helpful. But uh, last winter, and I think in this autumn also, uh, we spent all our money to our electricity independence. Because why we need new plugins if you don't have an electricity <laughs> in order to use them? Yeah. And uh, internet. It's also a very important question because we can work, we cannot work without inter internet connection. And it was a really huge problem uh, a couple of months. But uh, our internet providers also adopted to this situation and a lot of them started to develop uh, passive optical network technology. Uh, I don't know exactly how it works, but it works. Uh, it uh, lets to transform the data by the optical wire without electricity. And the provider just need to uh, switch on the equipment with help of generator, for example. And I just need to, to switch on my router into the um, power bank. And voila, we have internet even if we don't have electricity. And another good option is uh, Starlink terminals. It's, uh, it provides uh, satellite uh, internet. And it's a really, really good thing for companies and people who have access to the roof because, uh, because it needs uh, open sky in order to get a signal. But it really provides a good uh, and stable internet connection. And um, creating the local communities and co-working spaces. What it means? Uh, all these devices are really expensive and uh, there are huge demand on this in Ukraine, so the prices go to the sky. <laughs> and uh, people just united, united the effort. Yeah, they gather together. For example, uh, some people who clo live too close to each other, freelancers, maybe small teams, maybe friends who know each other here. Yeah? Someone has an internet, someone has uh, extra battery, someone has something else use useful. This, they bring all these devices to one place and uh, uh, create like improvised co-working place. It's the way when people support each other with equipment, with yeah, and with with, with communication, and it's really really great thing to understand. But in, in this time, you are not alone. Yeah, that you are among the people who have the same values, and it's really motivating and uh, worth a lot. Uh, and sure, if you have some unproductive time due to breakdowns, we just uh, working it out later. Sometimes later means even in the nights, really. We have uh, experience working, we have a strong deadlines, and our sound designer uh, get uh, in the night at about four o'clock in the morning or even earlier in order to finish the work and to deliver it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because they have electricity just in the night. Okay, stress and mental states. Sorry. Maybe it's the most difficult issue because it's all previous questions are just technical. Yeah, and this is. The war is a huge stress, and uh, which counting for a long time, it, it not stops. And uh, because it's every day you have a horrible news. Every day it's too much death, too much pain around you. And it's like really like crazy emotional ro 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 roller coaster, yeah? Like emotional swing. And uh, for me, it's more challenging to keep my mind cold when something really tragic happens. Because just imagine uh, that you the missile uh, shoots your city, uh, destroyed the residential building in a couple of kilometers of, from you, yeah, and a lot of people killed. But at the same time, for example, you have the, the task with a strong deadline, or you need to create some funny music for the kids game, for example. How to work in this situation? How it's possible? It's almost impossible, really. But we have our duties. 
we have our obligation to the, our customers. Uh, we need to pay salaries to support our families, to support our countries with taxes. So we must to stay productive. And we did it. What we did in order to restore our um, mental state and uh, keep running? I ask a lot of my colleagues uh, who also stay in Ukraine, what helps them in this situation? And uh, I combine their questions and have uh, some short list and some of these questions, their answers are there. The strong belief in the victory of Ukraine. It's the great motivation for all of, of us now because we understand when we work, we support our country economy. When we work, we can um, have possibility to donate, to support our uh, workers, yeah, to donate uh, the people who suffered from the war. So it really motivates you just to start and to just to wake up and continue working. Physical and sport activity. It doesn't matter what is this, it's dancing, jogging, boxing, swimming, anything. Uh, when you make any physical activity, it reduces the stress hormone level and uh, became, you became more quiet and have more power in order to continue action. Daily routine and handmade activity. It's interesting working, really, but it's working. Uh, because uh, in the most tragic uh, events happens, you often feel helpless because the war is beyond of our control. We cannot influence on what happens, yeah? But when we work by hands, we may make the small movements and we focus on this. And when we uh, do this handiwork, we control the process. And this control of the process returns the feeling of control to the brain. And if you cannot work with your head, just before you can try to work with your hand, and then you can be more productive. Oh, not to stay alone for a long time. Any interaction with people, friends, families, colleagues, maybe visiting events when it's possible, sure. Uh, a lot, it's a huge demand to psychologists, sure, because um, it's difficult <laughs> to stay. Uh, all the time uh, in the war conditions. But all this really works. Uh, to donate or volunteer. It's, uh, it's now it's la like our strong obligation. Because uh, when you volunteer, you just feel that you do something helpful. Yeah, and almost everyone who I know in Ukraine uh, donates to charity funds, to volunteers, or volunteer, uh, engaged in a volunteers' activity. Because really, a lot of people who suffer from the war, who lost their houses or get some traumas. Uh, um, so, if you do something helpful, it brings you energy. To appreciate the things we have right now. It may be sound banal, but but it works because in common life we absolutely doesn't. It, you switch on the lamp, it it not makes you happy, yeah. <laughs> but when you sit without electricity a couple of the days and your lamp is switch on, it's re it's really yeah, it's <laughs> make you really happy. And uh, in real life, we often not to think about how it's great to have possibility to hug your friend, yeah, to visit any places and not to, to think if it has uh, the shelter close to it, yeah. How it's great to hug your kids because in the world, maybe tomorrow you don't. Take time for the rest and restore. It's uh, goat without saying in the common life and in the war especially and uh, start doing working from the simplest action. Sometimes it's just enough to start from the small, some simple action. Just open your laptop, just open your program, just write to type in something and just continue and continue and continue, even if it goes slowly. Uh, okay. I just wanted to show you some games which we work with uh, during this uh, during the war. It's not a show real, really. It's uh, not a triple A games. 
It's, we don't use any top-notch technologies there. But all these games were sounded under the missile attacks and without electricity. Soy, girl and boy, boy, fun, learning game and toy, to enjoy, hello, joy, And uh, I believe that absolutely every company in Ukraine and absolutely every professional can show you the outstanding work we did, uh, they did uh, during this war, because all Ukraine continue working in spite of the war. And uh, everyone do their best in order to not to stop. So my main message to you is just cooperate with Ukrainians, Hire Ukrainians to your companies and so don't be afraid to co collaborate with the businesses who stayed in Ukraine because Ukrainians are the superhero now. Uh, it's the most motivated people in the world because we have a super goal. We understand that we stress resistance, we really adoptable and we can unite in order to resolve any problem. Uh, but and every day, Ukrainians have a thousand reasons to give up, but just, j they just continue moving forward, even if it goes in small steps. So, thank you for your attention. I'm here for your question. If you have it, let's communicate. Uh, good question, thank you. Um, it's possible. <laughs> but yeah, we have some difficulties with this uh, because I understand for the customers it's a risk. The customers decide that it's a risk. We, we stay in Ukraine and uh, they, uh, the customers think, oh, maybe we have a deadlines, yeah, but uh, you could be killed maybe. It's, and some companies did not risk to work with Ukrainians. But uh, I think it's... Uh, <laughs> maybe not a good decision because no one knows what happens even in five minutes. You can leave, you can have a huge plans for the next 10 years, yeah, and just to die because of any disease or just to due to crash, or even you can escape from the war to the Turkey, yeah, to, and uh, killed with uh, earthquake, for example. We never know what weight us. No one knows. So we just uh, working. We just uh, alive, and we <laughs> we continue live and continue work. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of customers, abroad customers, which are work uh, before the war, they continue to support us. And uh, we just agreed that if we need to evacuate, for example, or something absolutely extreme happens, I just uh, will inform you. And uh, yeah, we just have a bit more time for the projects in order to 
some force majeures yeah and uh, i we have the last uh, the last um, game which i show uh, is made by finnish company and it promotes with german uh, publisher and uh, this the opposition is cooperate with Ukrainians and support Ukrainian companies with the work, with the projects, and they promote them. Uh, and uh, it's, I really thankful for such companies. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, some companies uh, doesn't care about, uh, you just can, can, can work, okay, let's work, yeah. Okay, so perhaps any other questions? If no, I have my personal question. For example, where we can find those incredible games you showed us? Because I'm really interested in them. When, uh, sorry? When where we can find them, where we can play those games you showed us, those recordings with the sound. Where you could play? <laughs> play those games, yeah. You where? Some of them, this mobile projects, yeah, it should, you just download on Google Play or, or Apple Store. And uh, the last game, it's uh, on Steam. Uh, maybe you hear about it, it's Death from Above. It's about Ukrainian drone operator who uh, yeah, make death from above <laughs> to enemies. <laughs> okay, so such a great name for the game. Let's once again show our gratitude to Irina for her courage, for her efforts to come here to share her personal experience with us and to teach us how to go through crisis times in our lives. And? Mm, okay, uh, thanks. Uh, it depends of the project, sure, because uh, if it's uh, not large game, like a mobile game, for example, it's enough for the playable prototype, even if it's not the polished. But we can uh, see and try to play and understand what the, the mechanics and uh, the visual style and uh, to discuss the style of... But uh, if it's a big project, maybe it's a good idea to start from pre-production, just discussing the idea, because in a big projects there are really a lot of uh, scope of work with sound, uh, not only making content, yes, but uh, all this um, working in, in, the, in the engines, with materializations and 3D audio and etc. And uh, uh, it's better to start discussing something on the early phase of development in order to start and create, create maybe the first music tracks, maybe to um, find the right concept uh, of style of music and, uh, and other um, ideas which can be realized, released, realized in the games. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, because uh, such kind of games, it's uh, the um, monetization like uh, subscri subscribes and they uh, just uh, release uh, small uh, co co games each month, for example, yeah, and we just, uh, it's it's not a big, uh, it's constant work, but it's not a big uh, work at this uh, one moment. Yeah, it's just you. They create new content. Yeah, with with. Uh, okay. The voices. It's um, uh, the whole. 
um, big uh, kind of job, yeah. And uh, working with voices, it's uh, you can start even if you don't have any build because, but you have a scenario, you have the text, you have the characters' personalities, yeah. You understand how they look, yeah. And you you can start casting and recording. And it's not enough, not necessary to wait uh, the build. Yeah, 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 that. Yeah, thanks.